Okay guys, so this is the research paper I'm gonna be referencing in this video. It's called Penetration of Different Molecular Weight Hydrolyzed Keratins into Hair Fibers and Their Effects on the Physical Properties of Textured Hair. I absolutely love this research paper. It delves into so many different variations of textured hair. It delves into relaxed hair, it delves into natural hair, and also how different sized proteins interact with relaxed and natural hair to kind of help us to decipher which kind of proteins work best for textured hair. So this will be linked down below for you guys if you wanted to have a thorough, thorough read. You guys know I love a good research paper and to back things up with facts, so. Hey there guys, it is Natural Nadine here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is gonna be about why your natural hair is protein sensitive, okay? Honestly, I feel like I look like a hot mess right now. I just came home from work and literally jumped into here and started filming because I felt like if I sit down and start going about my day, I'm never gonna film this. So, do you know what? We're gonna normalize me coming on this channel looking a hot mess. It's not every day that I look cute, do you know what I mean? This really is the reality. My edges aren't even laid. This is the reality of what my natural hair looks like most of the time, so why not come on here like this? So today's video, we're gonna be talking about why your natural hair is protein sensitive. Now, I know a lot of you naturalistas can relate. You found a nice, banging, protein-packed product and you apply it on your hair on wash day and all of a sudden, your hair gets stiff. It feels dry. It feels like it's literally gonna snap with the running of your fingers in your hair and it's just awful, okay? It's the worst feeling ever when you feel like you have just put so much protein in your hair and your hair's it's kind of gonna be a part two on my first video, which is why your natural hair needs lots of protein. Newsflash, guys, this is not gonna be a video telling you guys to stop using proteins or that I hate protein. We need protein, okay? Protein is what strengthens our hair. We need it. If you haven't watched that video first, I would go and watch that video first. It explains a lot more about the science behind how proteins work in our hair and that type of thing. But today I'm gonna to be explaining what causes protein sensitivity and how to not be scared when it happens. So proteins are a chain of amino acids. Proteins like to exist in chains, they are stable in chains and they're not as stable when they are singular. In fact, a singular protein isn't a protein, it's an amino acid. So when you have a protein, it is a chain and it also likes to form another chain. The way proteins work is by bonding, is by binding to areas of your hair where there is damage, where there is broken broken chains or broken proteins and then binding itself to that forming a nice little chain and repairing your hair from the outside in. However, even though proteins are great at repairing your hair, no amount of proteins can return your hair back to its natural virgin state. Now I mentioned before that proteins are selectively binding. If you apply a product in your hair and there's nowhere for it to bind, there's nowhere for it to absorb, there's nowhere for it to go, you won't experience protein overload or protein sensitivity. Okay guys, so this is the research paper I'm gonna be referencing in this video. It's called Penetration of Different Molecular Weight Hydrolyzed Keratins into Hair Fibers and Their Effects on the Physical Properties of Textured Hair. I absolutely love this research paper. It delves into so many different variations of textured hair. It delves into relaxed hair, it delves into natural hair, and also how different sized proteins interact with relaxed and natural hair to kind of help us to decipher which kind of proteins work best for textured hair. So this will be linked down below for you guys if you wanted to have a thorough, thorough read. You guys know I love a good research paper and to back things up with facts, so. What exactly causes protein sensitivity? So another way that this is seen is in keratin treatments. So I don't know if any of you have ever wondered how or why keratin treatments work, but when you apply a keratin treatment to your hair, this is a pictogram by the way that I'm showing. It is not a scientific um, image. If you want the scientific image, that's in my first video. This is just for explanation purposes. When you apply a keratin treatment to your hair, what you can see that the protein here is doing is filling in the gaps within your hair. What you can see that this keratin is doing is, this is the cuticle beforehand, you apply a keratin treatment, the keratin molecules bind together and fill in gaps within your hair cuticle and just form a, form a protein layer on top of your hair. This gives you the illusion of healthier hair. That layer now makes your hair appear to have a smooth, 
uniform cuticular layer which a lot of people don't naturally have okay now this was also backed up in the research paper in this section on the effects of damaged hair this is how all proteins work and it said that peptides can unfold and absorb on the surface forming a film and filling the cracks the film was visible up to 10,000 times images and the peptides were not rinsed from the cracks as effectively as from the surface and then the strength basically from the hair came from that film that that protein has kind of made on the hair basically and then as you wash them as you wash them out as that keratin starts to break down as that keratin starts to get washed out as those gaps within your cuticle and your hair structure start to come back the keratin treatment wears off so that's exactly how proteins work if you apply a large amount of protein to your hair this can cause your hair to feel stiff why because you have one blocked your cuticles from allowing moisture to enter this is exactly why people say there's a protein moisture balance it's the fact that you have now got all this protein layered on top of your hair that one you can't effectively moisturize your hair two after you've applied all this protein protein increases your hair's strength but the stronger something is the more stiff it tends to be if you apply too much protein to hair that isn't properly moisturized you're now going to cause your hair to become stiff stiff and stiff now this was also observed within this study and it said with increasing humidity differences in young modulus between the hairs was observed now obviously an increase in humidity is more moisture and young's modulus is just a measure of how strong or stiff a material is so the more moisture that was added to the hair the less stiff that it became and let me tell you exactly why natural hair is more prone to this so i'm going to bring up this source here from this research paper from the department of anthropology from the pennsylvania state university i love this source i always reference this source because it's really one of the only sources that goes into absolute detail on black hair structure so i'm going to focus here on this african cuticle which is a black cuticle and i know a lot of people are like not everybody's african when i say black and african i'm not saying that everybody black is african i'm just saying that when you are categorizing genotypes in any scientific sense, there's really only three categories, African, Asian, and European, okay? As crazy as it sounds to box people in like that, that's how it works. Argue with your mum on this one because I ain't got the time. Guys, bear with me on this doodling because I'm really gonna try and just like make this very infographic for you guys so you can see and kind of what I'm talking about because sometimes it can be very difficult to explain. So this is an African hair cuticle, right? Now imagine you have applied a product with protein in it. Now I've mentioned before that African people, black people have high porosity hair. This is because they don't have that many cuticle layers. They have gaps within their cuticular pattern. They have thinner cuticles than, than other races. Their cuticles don't adhere together in the same way. So there's gaps within even full cuticle layers. And on top of that, our cuticles are naturally raised. This is exactly why black people are more prone to protein sensitivity, because we have high porosity hair. Now, if you have highly porous hair, that means you absorb a lot of protein in one go. And because you have high porosity hair, there's so many places for this protein to bind onto and form a chain. Okay guys, this was also found in this research paper that relaxed hair was more prone to stiffness. Now we know that relaxed hair obviously has a higher porosity, meaning it absorbs the proteins even more. And it also goes on to say that besides stabilizing the hair, proteins form salt linkages and the peptide may also have created covalent bonds to some extent via sulfur sulfur and sulfur hydrogen linkages inside the hair. It then goes on to say that literature agrees that proteins that have a higher affinity to hair means they like the hair more if there's places for it to form these disulfide bonds and bridges which in high porosity hair like relaxed or natural hair there is a lot. Look at this. This is me doing an infographic. Imagine these little circles that I'm applying here are proteins. There are so many spaces for proteins to come in, form a chain, bind onto, and just make themselves at home. And this is exactly why natural hair can be prone to protein sensitivity, even relaxed hair more so. One, there's so many places for protein to bind to, and two, your hair absorbs lots of protein in one go, so it can automatically start to feel stiff. It automatically starts to feel like it doesn't move. And on top of that, if your hair is dry, if you apply a protein-based deep conditioner before you've moisturized, 
go. It can be a recipe for disaster. Now, that, now, if you, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but white people and Asian products are always jam-packed with protein. They always have keratin this, keratin that, smoothing, strengthening, whatnot. They love protein in their hair products. And the reason why somebody with low porosity hair, like an Asian or an European person, is not prone to sensi protein sensitivity is because the protein has nowhere to go. So imagine you apply that same product the protein one it's gonna have to try and penetrate it might find a little gap here a little gap there a little hole here for it to kind of penetrate into but here's the problem protein is what provides our hair with strength okay please 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 don't cut protein out of your routine please i'm literally begging you i'm literally on my knees begging you don't cut protein out of your routine products like olaplex protein treatment products that are bond building curl smith Aphigee. So how do we implement protein in a controlled way into our routine to stop ourselves from getting this stiff protein sensitive sensation every time we apply protein? Simple. Be selective with the proteins you choose to use in your hair. Now I mentioned in my previous video about high molecular weight proteins and low molecular weight proteins. Keratin, for example, is a high molecular weight protein. For the most part, when you apply products with keratin to natural hair, it might absorb too much and it might not like it. Kind of in this infographic, if you have a massive protein, you are gonna be more prone to this buildup, you're gonna be more prone to this stiffness and you don't even need to absorb that much for you to be able to get that stiff, protein sensitive sensation that we get. However, if you now switch to a protein like silk protein, which is a low molecular weight protein, this will take a lot more of that protein for you to get that build up. So imagine they are little dots as opposed to large circles. How the amount of silk protein you would need to put in your hair for you to get that stiff feeling in your hair would be a lot more than if you were using large keratin molecules protein. This is also backed up in the research paper and it said that only high molecular weight peptide treated hair remained significantly stiffer than the relaxed hair control. Now I know a lot of people think that they don't, their hair is protein sensitive because they have low porosity hair. That's wrong. Low porosity hair is not prone to protein sensitivity and it's definitely a spectrum. Some people can handle lots of protein, some people can't handle a lot of protein at all. However, that doesn't mean you cut out protein from your routine completely. I'm gonna do another video that's probably gonna have more product recommendations on low molecular weight proteins so that as black people, we can start implementing products that strengthen our hair and give us the protein that we need without getting that protein sensitive, stiff and dry feeling because we already have dry hair as it is. Adding high molecular weight proteins to dry hair can be a bad idea because it can stop our hair from being able to get the moisture that it needs. So guys, I really hope that this video made some sort of sense to you. So guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.